Welcome in, everybody. Week six of the college football season is here. Cole Kublik, Simone Eli joining you for Auburn football head-to-head. The Tigers dropped a heartbreaker at home uh, last Saturday. Oklahoma uh, stuns all of Jordan-Hare Stadium in the final few minutes. We'll recap that game and also look ahead to Saturday's big matchup in Athens against the Georgia Bulldogs. Let's go head-to-head. Welcome in, everybody. Cole and Simone joining you this week. Cole, let's strip the Band-Aid off, man. This is a week that Auburn fans want to put behind them. This is a I, – I've really been dreading even doing this part of the show and recapping this game because I felt as though I had such moments of happiness and thrill for Auburn on Saturday and then such moments of just utter disappointment and sadness as well, of course, as the Tigers fall to Oklahoma there in their fifth game, uh, home game to start the season. It was rough, but I do think there's some positives you're going to be able to build around. Um, you, you were able to move the football a little bit better outside of the pick six towards the end. I did think Peyton Thorne was a little bit more accurate, a little bit better with his decisions. There's a little communication issue on a couple throws between he and the receivers. I thought a couple of the receivers loafed on a couple plays. The offensive line looked a little bit better, but I really liked the plan. Uh, the extension of the run game, quick in the perimeter, hit some of the backs out of the backfield, some quick throws to a couple of the receivers force that Oklahoma defense to defend that. And then that could open up some things from Jarquez Hunter. And it did. You would hope that you would lean on Jarquez a little bit later in the game, but that just wasn't there. You get one big play down the sideline, which why you're in man coverage there. I'm not really sure. Uh, and then the pick six is just a backbreaker. It's you had other opportunities to close that game out. I always go back. Usually Simone, the drive before start pe- people start thinking about four minute offense. There's about 10 41 yeah. left. And first and second down, you threw two incomplete passes. Uh, You'd miss a field goal on that drive, but you had a chance to really get that thing probably under nine minutes before you gave the ball back, even if you wanted to attempt a field goal or not. And maybe not attempt a field goal, but flip the field with some kind of a pooch punt right there and an offense that hadn't done a lot that day. So it comes down to playing the game, not playing the play. And I felt like Auburn was playing plays late in that game. Uh, this was the exact blitz beater that they ran the week before against Arkansas. And they hit the slant. This is the play that Arkansas, the DB, the safety was at depth, jumped the route, and Keandre Lambert Smith went to the house. The exact formation, the exact route combination on both sides. Mm-hmm. Oklahoma was prepared for that. I went back and charted it. They ran this exact pressure once against Temple, once against Houston, twice against Tennessee. And only one time in all those pressures did they actually bring the defenders. And Danny Stussman wasn't in the game for that one. So you had seen it. It was on film. And you go empty in that deal. So six guys on the line of scrimmage, somebody's getting loose. You happen to slide it the wrong direction, which put some money in Peyton Thorne's face and forced him to make that throw, which ended up being intercepted. It was a great call by Oklahoma, a great play by Kip Lewis, but an absolute backbreaker, heartbreaker for the Auburn Tigers. Let's talk about that a little bit more in depth, the the read on that play. And a lot of people have voiced their opinions. And listen, I mean, everyone knows that Hugh Freeze is, is, is calling the offense and he's made that well known. You can tell just watching the games. And do you, do you feel as though there have been situations throughout the game, but also in that third and four play that I mean, I'm not asking you to sit here and like coach the Auburn Tigers, but was that is that just not where this program needs the position this program needs to be put in? Because even Hugh said himself on Monday, I need to put, I need to have, take the decision-making out of it. I need, you know, there needs to just be maybe a simple more, I don't think he used the word simple, but that was kind of what he was trying to get across. Yeah. There, there is some confusion. One, they didn't run this pressure earlier in the game. Um, Auburn did not run this play earlier in the game. Both of those are false. Um, So yes, there was a, a tip pass on an RPO by Kip Lewis down near the goal line earlier in the game, but, None of it was the same. None of it was similar. So I don't think you can draw that comparison. I just go back to, and I think if Hugh Freeze had his chance again, he's giving the ball to 27, and he's going to try to grind out that clock. I mean, that's. I think you have to be in tune with what your football team is, and you have to be very real with yourself on that. And let's be honest, Simone, we know Peyton Thorne has made mistakes. I said last week on this show, I caught a lot of hell about it. This is not a quarterback problem. I still believe that. I see offensive linemen whiff. I thought the tight ends were better. I thought the backs collectively were better. And there are mistakes made by a lot of different individuals in this game. It's just the quarterback made the biggest mistake of the game late, and it cost them the game at that point. But there were other chances. There are other opportunities. 
I mean, don't give up the deep ball and allow them to score. Uh, don't allow your spy to get stuck right around the center and not be able to get out and catch Michael Hawkins Jr. going to the end zone to score a touchdown. I mean, there are other mistakes that were made. It's just that mistake by Peyton Thorne was a big one and one that's going to be highlighted. So I think if you go back, you look at it, maybe a drive or two earlier in that, we got to start working clock here. We're just looking to hold on and get a win. I don't care how it is, what happens, what the stats are. Like, hold on for dear life and get a W. And it felt like it was more just running plays later in the game than it was taking that strategy into it. I want to go back to the first half. And I've watched a lot of football since this this half and right this moment. So I don't want to misspeak. But the fourth down near the goal line when Sam Jackson was brought in uh, in, in the wildcat, I mean, call it whatever you want to call it. Well, I don't think we had. Have we seen that look this season? And, and no, I, don't think, I think that's, I mean that's the first time I think they've run him at quarterback. I know they had been repping it, but that's the first time we actually saw it. Were you surprised to go with that in that moment, given that there was momentum in Auburn's favor, or did you think that? I mean, obviously, it's not like they just looked down the play sheet and said, "Hey, we're going to do this. This is something you know you game plan and you get you you look at what your offense looks like early." I'm sure, but. Were you a little surprised by the call there rather than just handing it off to the guy you've been saying to hand it off to for the last five weeks? A little bit. You have – and I think people need to understand situationally. You go into a game with your short yardage plays. You go into games with the red zone package. You go into games with the goal line package. You go into game with a two-point play package. You go into game with an end of game, end of series, end of half package, whatever that is. And then situational football all across the field, left hash, right hash, different down yeah. the distances. So – if your plan throughout the week was Sam Jackson inside the 10, inside the five, whatever that is, then you go with what you practiced and what you You're worked. Right. You don't want to get yeah. too far away from what you repped. Now, having said that, uh, I could show you two or three clips where Jarquez Hunter is running through 28, who Danny Stubbs been one of the best linebackers in this league and couldn't get into the ground. I probably want that guy near the goal line because I have a feel, even if things go wrong, he can make us right. And yeah. we've repped that forever for, three and a half, four years, whatever it is that he's been here. So that's me. Uh, that's where I would want to go with it. And if, I think, too, if you're going to take that Sam Jackson approach, I want you to spread it out. So I want you to draw as much attention away from the box as you can and then allow him to kind of work his magic a little bit because that's the beauty of him in the game is that he's shifty. He can change direction. He can make a cut, not running through people. So don't draw. It's exactly what Oklahoma did the week before. And you had a quarterback that was mobile, even in Jackson Arnold, still having a Michael Hawkins Jr. And you're calling these quarterback runs or you're utilizing quarterback options to keep the ball and run, yet it's compressed formations and bigger formations. Yeah. Like, I don't want that attention near the tackle box. I need space for my quarterback to be able to hurt you and break you down. Yeah. That's probably what I would have liked to have seen if you're going to go that direction. Before we really get to talking about Auburn's first road game, which is a, one heck of a road game, no question, and when you go to Georgia and playing against the the Bulldogs coming off of a loss to Alabama, what do you have to offer fans? Not that you're supposed to be the guy that keeps everybody together, but I'm going to put it on you anyway. What do you have to offer fans right now who maybe have some frustration, who are looking around with palms up a little bit like a DB that just got beat deep? Like, I mean, what, what do you say to these people who are like, what is this? Why is this look this way? Why isn't this better? And who also look across the state and go, here's Alabama doing all of these things and this big walk-off win and all this excitement with Georgia. Why can't we have that? I mean, what do you have to offer fans that kind of feel just maybe, maybe a little bit deflated right now? Yeah, for number one, I'm not big into the comparison game. I would say be more concerned with yourself. Recruiting is heading in the right direction. There's a lot of young players that are playing. There are new guys that are showing up and doing good things on an almost weekly basis. I think Malcolm Simmons continues to come on and looks great at wide receiver. I'd like to see Robert Lewis involved just a little bit more. I think he's got some juice. Demarcus Riddick defensively looked incredible. I mean, he looked like his hair was on fire, uh, flying around, physical, some of the things that he was doing. Um, I mean, that's a young player that's in the game making plays. Uh, you still have some of your younger players that are doing some really good things on a regular basis. Amaris Williams was in the game some. You know, he's a guy that looks pretty good. So I think you have young players that are coming on, doing some nice things. Keldrick Falk is, is not a veteran by any stretch of the imagination. He continues to be impressive. And some of those times are some of those players are going to take time to build. This entire yeah. thing is going to take time to build. I'm not mad at anybody that's mad. I'm not mad at anybody that's frustrated because it tells me that you care. And that's fine. 
you want to win. You play the game to win. That's what it is. But, you know, I think it's also, if you're going to be frustrated, you're going to be angry, just try to keep a little bit of reality along with it and not go overboard with fire somebody or bench somebody right away because certain things take time to get ironed out. Yeah. Totally fair. Totally fair. You'd be a good therapist uh, as well as uh, an analyst here on our college football show and the SEC Network. Uh, Cole, as, as you look at Auburn take this trip to Georgia, you look at the Georgia team too. Uh, yeah, I know each week you kind of put – you watch every single SEC game, and I always go through and I follow all of your updates. You do a great job with that. You know, more football than literally probably anybody on the planet. But when you look at this Auburn team who's going to play rival – Georgia, right? Deep South's oldest rivalry. This is a game that a lot of fans back when it was back to back with the Iron Bowl with one, you know, game nobody cared about smashed in between. It was kind of, it's a little, it's maybe the luster is different. I don't know. I mean, it feels a little bit different being like in the early October and, and not near the end of the season and having all of these huge stakes in the SEC. But nonetheless, it's still Georgia and a Georgia team that's coming off of a loss to Alabama that they want to get out of their system as well. Overall, kind of your opinion on this matchup as the Tigers look to to uh, really bounce back and and go on the road for the first time this year? It's one that Auburn's going to have to play almost perfect football to win. First off, it's a very difficult place to go play. It is a rivalry game. It's going to mean more to a lot more people, fans, coaches, players, um, just people yep. that are involved with it. it. It brings a lot more meaning. So usually in games like that, I think your focus is a little bit more important because I think your mistakes become more costly because more people are more dialed into what's happening. Um you're going to probably need Georgia to play down a little bit. You're going to need some mistakes, plain and simple. Um, if they play a clean game to the best of their ability, it's going to be tough for Auburn to actually go out toe-to-toe -to -toe and win that football game. But Georgia's got some injuries on their offensive line. That's something that maybe Auburn can take advantage of. I think DJ Durkin's done a really nice job this year. I think he's found a linebacking core that can be versatile, that can do different things. And Carson Beck was confused in the first half of that game last week. You take a little bit of that plan with what you have personnel-wise, you try to mix and match some of it in. You try to get some pressure on him. Uh, maybe utilize some pressures and stunts to be able to slow down their rushing attack. Offensively, you're going to have to offset some big-time talent. I mean, bottom line. One of the yeah. best safeties in college football. One of the best edge defenders in college football. Uh, Warren Brinson was back last week, so a really good group of defensive tackles. Your offensive line is going to have to play great. And I thought they played a little bit better last week. Uh, I thought altogether it was one of their better performances this year. It's got to take a step. And your best players have to make plays. Jarquez Hunter's got to make plays. Cam Coleman, Malcolm Simmons have got to make plays. And obviously turnovers, you, you just can't do it. You can't have turnovers on the road. Uh, you limit the penalties. You run the football a little bit, maintain possession. You find yourself in a close game, and then you hope somebody can go make a play or you can force them into a mistake. It's going to take a valiant effort. There's no doubt about it. There are no moral victories in college football, and we know that. But the, whether Auburn comes out of this game feeling as though they took a step in the right direction, be it a win, that would be obviously a step in the right direction, or just performance on the field, less mistakes, less turnovers. Again, not an easy task when you're looking at what this Georgia team is capable of defensively. They just gave up their first touchdowns all season last week in Tuscaloosa. Because then Auburn's going to go on the bye, and then they're going to spend the rest of October on the road. You have to feel good about something, win, loss, or otherwise, going into this bye. How crucial will that be for this program when it comes to momentum as you enter into the rest of October and then you get into, okay, what do things look like there in November if, if anything is still on the table? Well, I'll, I'll say win or loss. I think one positive that comes out of that is you get a break. And when things are not going your way, and people are looking across the room, maybe pointing fingers or at least thinking somebody else's fault or somebody's not bringing it, somebody's not getting their job done, it's good to just get away. It's good to get a little separation, True. to get it off your mind, to kind of refocus in a way that you're not able to during the normal game week of preparation. That'll be a positive no matter what. I wouldn't be surprised to see them have a little extra time off than they normally would. You just, you've got to find something different, change up the routine and get it off your mind, and then hit the reset button to come back and try to finish strong. If, the only way I think you take real momentum from the game into a bye week would be with a win, no matter how it looked. Fair. Tough to take momentum into the off week with a loss. Even if you go play great, people are going to focus on the L and focus on the things that happened that did not allow you to win. So tough to really find a lot of momentum you're going to take into an entire week off where you don't actually get a W. 
Yeah, that's really fair. Uh, no doubt. I think it's a uh, 2.30 kickoff there in Athens, Auburn, and Georgia. Of course, Georgia down to fifth in the country after falling to Alabama in one of the most historic games I've probably ever seen uh, in the SEC play. And there's been some good ones in the last 10 years that I've covered this league. But, uh, Cole, when you look at what this game could look like on the scoreboard, uh, where, do you, where do you feel like this one will end up before Auburn goes and takes that break and, and has a breather and, and kind of just is able to – mentally and physically relax for a couple of days before preparing for uh, Missouri. <laughs> I actually do think that I saw some things in this game against Oklahoma that can, they can build on and they can kind of attach to and utilize as a foundation moving forward. Um, it's going to be a big test for the secondary, the most difficult test the secondary has had this season. Keep in mind, you had the top four or five receivers for Oklahoma were out last week and a couple of those pretty good players. This is a different group that can hurt you in one-on-ones, or run after catch, take advantage down the field. That's going to be a massive challenge. The offensive line is still big and physical, so how are you going to hold up against that, even though they're a little bit dinged up right now? don't know how healthy they're going to be. But, like I said, I love some of the additions to the offense formation-wise last week. Different plays, extensions of the run game through the quick throws. I think they can find a way to keep this defense off balance a little bit. I think you'll see more misdirection. I think you'll see more design quarterback run. Uh, at this point in time, you got nothing to lose. Go ahead and run it. I mean, if you can if you can steal yeah. six, eight, ten yards at a time, uh, once every few series, do it. Take advantage of it. Uh, and then defensively, I think you'll probably see more linebackers on the field at a time if possible to allow them to be the playmakers that I think they can be. Um, you know, Jalen McLeod's been great off the ball this year. I didn't expect that. You know, playing as an actual linebacker, but he can rush the passer as well. You just don't want him standing up against the run the 320 pound tackles and a combo block with he and a tight end very many times during the course of a game. So I think Georgia wins the game. I think it's probably a little bit lower scoring than people think because Auburn's defense will play well. I think Auburn will move the ball. You go back to what happened inside the 10 yard line last week. I think red zone still going to be a little bit of a problem unless they just begin to lean on 27 as I think they should. Do you have a score? Um, I'll go 28, 14 Georgia. Okay. I mean, it's closer than what I, what I was going to go with, which is more like 35-14. But I do think that there is that level of what do you have to lose? And I think that out of that might come some Im- impressive high-flying plays where you're like, hey, let's just let the guys go be athletes and, and see what they can do. And so, yeah, I agree. I do think that uh, that Auburn could get in, the, get in the end zone a couple times, but at the end of the day, probably not going to come out on the winning end as they enter the bye week and then continue to stay on the road in the SEC throughout the month of October. Uh, it's not perfect right now, but Cole, I think that you offered a lot of uh, positive things. You're good at this thing, keeping everybody level and not falling off their rocker entirely. So we appreciate your effort in that. Thank you. Cool. All right, guys. Thanks so much for Cole. I'm Simone. And this has been Head to Head, and we will see you in two weeks. Brought to you by Alabama Beef Farmers and Ranchers. Mm-hmm.